Hello and welcome back. In our last part, we created a character and enabled them to move around. Now, we're gonna be taking this to the next step and actually adding a jump mechanic to the character so they can go up cliffs such as this. Now, in order to do that, we have to go back to the character. And here, if you remember uh, the inputs, we have a jump input. So, like, jump so we'll be using this uh, this event to handle our jumping now in this case we want jumping to be formed out of two distinct parts first is the jumping and the second is the falling jumping is when the character moves up in the air and falling is when the character stops moving upwards and starts falling to the ground so these will be two different states with two different animations so we will need to create two different booleans in order to track them so let's do that right now shall we let's create two variables b is jump b is jumping and another variable called b is falling. There you go. And now we have our pixel character movement component. We'll just drag it into the scene and search for the jump function, which is right here. And now we just connect it here. Now it, you can see it has a base movement speed. Uh, variable that needs to be plugged in don't worry you can just leave it like it is and it, it's gonna be fine since it's not currently in use it's something planned for a future update so now just by using this you should be able to jump oops there you go and yep as you can see the character is jumping so now you can go here and jump but I mean, obviously we have a few issues, like the animation doesn't change, the character keeps his, uh, the previous animation with him and whatnot. So let's change that, shall we? Now we have a return here that basically asks if they can jump, which basically Sometimes you will want to jump, but you can't jump because you might already be falling or you might be doing an action that doesn't allow you to jump. And we don't actually want to switch the state to jumping if you can't physically jump. So we just need to add a branch and branching you can press B and click. And basically, I'm not sure, have we talked about branches yet? Not really. A branch is just like... Uh, Two paths like it's a crossroads like you have an input and then based on the value of the boolean that we plug into it it's gonna either execute this part or that part so in our case if the player can jump then they'll execute this part if the players can jump they'll execute this part now in our case we don't need anything for the false we just need something for if it's true so if it is true then let's set b is jumping to true so basically if you can jump then this is true but if you can jump we don't do anything so nothing happens so in our case as, as i mentioned jumping is made out of two distinct states the jump state and the false state you can just one have one state but if you look at our animation and let's go here and into the pixel 2d flipbooks character and final let's find the jump animation you can do that just simply by just pressing jump and it's gonna isolate it and as you can see our jump animation is not something that we want to loop because it moves the character's uh, sprite location and if we just loop it while in the air, it's just gonna move up and down, up and down, up and down erratically. So this animation is meant just to be played once and then ideally we want to transition to the 
fall animation, which is a nice loopable animation that doesn't change the character's position. So, in order to do that, basically, set jumping needs to be active just long enough for the state to kick in, and then we'll, we're gonna deactivate it and move into the is falling state. So, in order to do that, let's add a delay. Delay basically is what what you imagine is like it delays the the next action by the amount you specified and in our case it's okay if you just put it 0.1 seconds as i said we don't need a lot and then do is jumping set it to false and then set falling to true so technically you press jump you set jumping to true, it's gonna uh, enter the jumping state, 0.1 second passes, and then jumping is false, and it's gonna enter the falling state. Right? Cool. And now we need one more thing in order to be double sure. Once the keyboard is released, we're gonna use the pixel character movement and basically end jumping. In order to know what end jumping does, you have to know how jumping works. Like jumping is really simple in concept. It just applies a force on the character on the on the vertical up axis for a specified amount of time. And in our case, it's just for uh, a frame. It's just like once, but you can make it so it's uh, it continuously applies the force for as long as you held the keyboard press and what end jumping does is guarantees that once the keyboard is is not pressed anymore no uh, acceleration will be applied anymore so that's it basically great now that we have the logic on the character side let's try to apply the uh, logic to the animation side so need to go back to your game folder into blueprints and open up your hero character anim blueprint and first step is just to take the new variables that we created and and save them as a reference here so we can use them so is jumping gonna get it and is falling gonna get both of them and save them promote to variable a is jumping and same here a is falling cool uh, i have the application uh, that, that, it doesn't matter okay great compile and save this and now let's go back to the our state machine you can Access is by double clicking it. And now we need to add a new state called. Oops, added a comment. It's fine. Jump. And then another state called. Falling. Okay, and now we have to decide where do we want the player to jump? Where we want them to be able to jump from both idle and movement. So, in this case. We're just gonna drag it from here and here but where do we want the player to go from jumping well as we discussed we want them to go from jumping to falling and where do we want the player to go from falling well in our case it's pretty simple if we make the player go from falling to uh, idle that means then whenever they're gonna stop falling uh, the transition back into idle, which is fine because if, for example, you fall, uh, you start falling, you hit the ground and you become idle, if you're still moving, then you immediately tra transition from idle to movement without any issue. So, in our case, we're just gonna do this. So, hope, hope you can follow. So, you're in idle, you press jump, great. You go to the jump state and from the state uh, from the jump state you go to the fall state and when you finish falling 
you go back to the idle state. Same for the movement. If you're moving and you press jump, you go to the same state and then falling and idle and move, moving back again. So in our case, let's add the transition rules. And for idle to jump and movement to jump, it's pretty simple. It's just uh, get if it's jumping. And from here to here, we get if it's... Nope, it's still jumping. Great. Okay, so net, now let's handle falling. Uh, one quick uh, tip is, so what, what if we don't want to uh, jump? What if the character just goes off a cliff, right? Like, they don't need to go into the jump section anymore, they need to go directly into the falling state, right? So we can easily add a transition from idle to... And actually from, from both of them to falling if we just want them to fall. So this is getting a bit uh, complex and it's gonna happen if you use a lot of states, but once we... Uh, once we advanced a bit further, I'm gonna teach you how to use nested state machines, which should really simplify the workflow. So in our case, let's add like from the movement to falling transition, like just check if it's falling. Great. Same for the idle to falling, just check if it's falling. And now from the falling to idle, it's simple, it's not. Basically when they're not falling anymore, then we, we can assume that they landed and they can go back to idle. Now we haven't uh, mentioned the transition from jump jumping to falling yet. And why is that? Because we use something a bit different, which is something really cool that's used for animations that we don't want to loop so like if you want to use one shot animations then you'll definitely be using the next the next one so we go here and basically we find get time so an animation time we have the get relevant animation time or time remaining and we can do both in uh, absolute time or in fraction so it's like from 1 to 0 point fr from 1 to 0 as a percentage we'll be we'll be using fraction in our case since it's uh, it apply it scales to any animation length but what this does is basically as the animation ticks down ticks ticks up from like the beginning to the end this fraction will uh, start to get smaller and smaller and smaller. So at the beginning of the animation, this value is one, and at the end of the animation, this value is zero. So in our case, we wanted to transition to the next animation, like when we want the jump animation to transition into the falling animation as soon as the animation reaches, the jump animation reaches the end, but not exactly, it's just like a fraction of a fraction of a second before. So how do we do this? Is basically we compare, so if we use a basically uh, smaller basically if this is smaller than 0 0.01 for example so that means when there's like 1% left of the animation time we are gonna transition from this to that Hope, hope you followed uh, up until now. If you don't, if you didn't and have any questions, please post them on the, either the YouTube video or on the Discord channel. And now all, all that's left is to populate these two states. So for the jump, we're gonna find the phase uh, FB character jump. There's a lot of, a lot of characters here. Give me a second. The jump begin. Cool. Compile, save. 
and then the falling can fall uh, great now hopefully let's test it out close that and then uh, hit play in a second and now oops so as you can see we're stuck in this loop and why is that well that's because we have the mm, we have the falling state and we only exit the falling state when this uh, is negative but we set it to positive here but we don't set it to negative ever now how can we set it to negative well we have an event called landed and basically what this does is it's let's find event Basically, this launches whenever the character stops jumping and hits the ground. This is really useful for us because we know that when the event on landed is is triggered, then the character must have hit the ground. So in this case, we'll just set B is falling. Or just is falling, don't call it B is falling anymore. To false and just to be double sure in case there's some weird oddities with like jumping here and not uh, not switching to zero in case for some reason your delay is too long and the character lands before the delay happens just put it to false sorry okay and now let's see we jump fall and idle again jump fall idle again and now let's see if we can do it yep as you can see we can do it from movement and if you keep moving you'll still you'll still uh, end up with the correct animation and now let's just double check with the, if it just falls huh so so as you saw the moving off a cliff didn't trigger the fall and the fall uh, animation why is that well because we didn't actually gave uh, our character the order to enter the uh, fall state by putting is falling to true when falling off a cliff now luckily we have an event for walking off the cliff edge as well so we just right click so event walking on cliff edge and we can just take is falling and set it and is moving and set it so basically in this case we're just gonna set is falling to is true and is moving to is false and again we can do the same for is jumping in case this is just like a double precaution to be double safe in case for some reason your is jumping is set to true or whatnot and now technically to walk off the cliff there you go we start falling and even if we move while falling then we'll still be we'll still be in the fall animation which is what we want cool uh, i hope this made sense it's beca it's become a bit more complicated than the initial ones which hopefully is fine hopefully i'm going at a good pace and next up our main goal will be to create an attack state and some attack animation but we'll be going into a bit more um, uh, detail and we'll be start we'll start using some more complex variables and whatnot so i'd like to make a small video just after this where i'm gonna detail the different types of variables that uh, are accessible in unreal engine and the different concepts of using and exposing variables such as public, private, exposed on blueprints and all and a lot of things that we'll be using quite a lot in the future. So uh, stay tuned for the next one. Don't forget to like and subscribe and see you guys next time.